What is up my bodyweight warriors and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the much requested video and that is on the tuck handstand. As some of you may have noticed I've been doing a hell of a lot of tuck handstand especially over this past year and that is because it is one of those most essential movements for developing two arm handstand just that little bit further. There is a nice little saying popping around on Instagram basically saying tuck so you don't suck. And that is pretty damn accurate. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through the reasons why you want to be doing the tuck handstand, the kind of form cues that you wanna be thinking about, and a couple of progressions that you can use to get there. The tuck handstand is essentially a development of the straight line handstand. Ideally, once we get a little bit more refined with our handstand and we're kicking up into a two arm, we want to be in a good straight line. So this is gonna be when all of our joints are stacked on top of each other. So we have elbows on top of wrists, shoulders on top of elbows, hips on top of shoulders and then feet at the top, making hopefully pretty much one nice straight line through all of those joints. This is gonna be the most efficient position and also most stable position to do further moves in the handstand. The tuck handstand is essentially just a development of this straight line handstand. When we tuck down and go into that tuck position, we're gonna to aim to maintain that wrist, elbow, shoulder and hip line all in one nice line. Our legs are just gonna be tucked up by our chest. So what this is doing is it basically is making the straight line handstand just that much more intense. It's gonna concentrate more and develop more of the strength on the upper back, which is essential for future moves into arm handstands and hand balancing in general. So things like the press to handstand, things like pike, things like the one arm handstand, all of that sort of stuff. This is gonna help develop the strength that you need in shoulder flexion. Something that's very handstand specific. Whilst this position is much more intense to hold simply because of where it shifts the center of gravity, it's also gonna make it actually easier to balance because your center of gravity is that much lower. So it's more intense, it's heavier, but it is gonna be easier to balance. The reason this position is so good and such an important stepping stone once you have a two arm handstand is because it forces you to have open shoulders and it will help to develop your overhead flexibility. I have struggled for years with my overhead flexibility. I have not got the best genetic predisposition for shoulder flexibility. The one thing that managed to break through that last little bit for me was the tuck handstand because it's strengthening in that end range of shoulder flexion, that thing that's very, very specific to doing handstands. So if you wanna develop your overhead flexibility, the tuck handstand will force you to have to have good overhead flexibility because if you don't, if you start in like a banana handstand, you tuck on down and your shoulders stay in front, yes, you can hold it, but ultimately it's gonna be that much heavier and that much harder to hold. It's gonna kind of force you to be more efficient, to be stronger in that position, to be more stacked. So that more stacked you can be, the easier this position is gonna to be to hold. So hopefully that kind of explains why we wanna do the tuck handstand. It is a development of the straight arm handstand for one. It's gonna strengthen your shoulders for various different future moves, whether that's press the handstand, pike, or even working towards some one arm training. And finally, it's also gonna help develop and enforce what it feels like to have good overhead flexibility because you have to to not suck at this exercise. So now that we understand why you want to do the tuck handstand, let's talk a little bit about how you can go about doing it and a few different progressions that you can use. So with the tuck handstand, it may seem like a relatively advanced move, but it is a little bit easier to balance. It's just heavier and it's a new position that's gonna take some time and awareness to get into. If you don't have a two arm handstand, here are a couple of progressions that you can try to get into a tuck position, build strength in those shoulders to support your handstand training as you're learning to balance the handstand. The first one is the back to wall tuck handstand. Now for this one, you're gonna kick up into a back to wall position. You're gonna push nice and tall through those shoulders and go into a straight line. From here, what you're gonna think about doing is you're gonna think about posteriorly tucking those hips and then starting to pull the knees down towards the chest. And in this position, it's very, very important that as you do this, you try to push as tall as possible the entire time during the exercise. You can still use the wall to assist with your feet dragging down it, but try to keep the knees the correct side of the hand line. For this one, very simply, just try to tuck down as far as you can comfortably hold. Then you can then either choose to hold this position for a few seconds before going back up and repeating for reps, or you can just hold it for time. 
Eventually, as you get lower into this position, your feet will want to leave the wall and then you can start trying to balance the freestanding handstand. The other progression that you can do that's gonna force a little bit more weight onto those shoulders is another wall-assisted tuck handstand, but this time we're gonna be performing this one in chest to wall position. The chest to wall position is gonna force a little bit more load onto those shoulders, so it's gonna be more of a strength focus, much more intense on the strength element of the tuck handstand. And it's also gonna make sure that you start pushing those hips over the hand line to counterbalance the tucking of the legs. For this one, again, start chest to wall handstand, nice straight line. You're gonna to want to come a little bit away from the wall on this one so you have room to tuck up. All you're gonna do from here is again, think about that posterior pelvic tilt, think about tucking the knees down, and then just start bringing the legs towards your chest. Again, with this one, just tuck as far as you feel comfortable. You might get to 45 degrees, you might get lower, you might get to 90. Just keep coming down till you find a point that feels good and intense enough for you. All the time, you're trying to push tall, try and maintain stacked shoulders, and you're trying to let those hips just drift out over the hand line to counterbalance where those legs will be. Again, pause here for a few seconds, and then go back up and perform for reps, or you can just hold for time. And those are basically the two progressions that you're gonna to want to use as a beginner who is learning to balance their two-arm handstand. And it's gonna help strengthen your shoulders, it's gonna help improve stability in your shoulders, and it's also gonna prepare you for some later skills when it comes to hand balancing. If you do have a two-arm handstand down and you wanna start incorporating tuck work, the best way to do it is to just start trying. You can start using some of those wall drills and start to try and feel light on the wall. Or you can simply try to go from straight freestanding handstand and then just start to tuck up as much as you can. So this one here, again, like the other drills we've done, you can stop you know, at 45 degrees, you can come down to 90, you can tuck up even more. Just keep working it and getting more awareness as to where your body is in this position. It's very, very useful for this one just to film yourself and you can see where exactly it is you look like versus what it feels like because those are two often different things. But that is basically it. That is the why and the how you can go about doing and learning the tuck handstand. Once you have your tuck handstand down, you should have one, some pretty damn strong shoulders for future hand balancing work. Number two, you should have some pretty flexible shoulders because it's gonna force and require that flexibility. And number three, you're probably gonna be in a pretty good stint to learn future hand balancing moves, whether that's the press to handstand, whether that's pike handstand or future one arm handstand work. But that has been it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this was a much requested one, so I hope it helps a lot of you out. If you do have any questions about today's video, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. I'm sure one of the tribe will answer any questions for you or I'll try to get around to them. If you just enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button so you can join the Bodyweight Warrior tribe and don't miss out on any future videos. But that has been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.